Hello and welcome to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different than my past videos and going to be more of a informational and fun tutorial style video. So today I'm going to be working on this painting of a young chicken, but I'm using a reference by Karen and I can't pronounce your last name. I'll put the photo up on the screen. Karen does some absolutely gorgeous photography, animals, landscapes, a lot of animal portraits too, which I personally love. And she shares them on her Facebook page, which I will link down in the description for you guys to check out. In her Facebook group, she also allows other artists to actually do paintings and other artworks from her photographs. So thank you, Karen, for allowing people to do that. I think that's awesome. So when I'm working from a photograph, which is what I do most of the time, I will usually have a printed copy. And this is just from an inkjet printer, so it's not the best in color quality. Uh, but it gives me a good physical reference as well as to do my sketch from. And I like to have a printed version with me because I can lay it against my painting area and I can even you know, dot some colors on there to color match and sometimes that can be really helpful especially if I'm stuck on you know what colors to use. I also like to use a digital version so here I have my iPad just set up on this nice little metal stand and I like keeping like a digital you know screen version of the photograph as well because sometimes it's a lot brighter and the colors are a lot more accurate than my inkjet printer. So when I'm working in watercolor I 99% of the time will use a sketch of some kind. So for this sketch I decided to use a regular pencil and this is a 2H pencil that I used in case you're curious. And I like the 2H and that's what I originally started with when I started painting because it creates such a nice light line. You do not have to press hard with these harder leads. And it also creates a line that's light enough that it's not gonna get like in the way of my watercolor, but also dark, you know, just dark enough that I can still kind of see where I want things to go. And it makes it a nice, it makes it an easy to read and easy to follow sketch. Now, as you'll notice here on my sketch, I know it's probably a little faint because of the pencil. I don't actually draw every single feather, every single detail of the animal or person or subject that I'm painting. And the reason is that a lot of the sketch itself is going to get covered up. I do leave some of my marks show in my final paintings and that's a personal preference if you want to leave that or hide it. But I, since I know that I'm going to cover most of it up anyway, I don't you know, go super into the details because that is safe for the painting process. So the paper that I'm using today is my favorite Arches 140 pound cold pressed paper. And this is a very light paper, it's not extremely heavy, but I like it because it has just enough tooth to really allow me to get in and get some really nice fine details. It is not as fine or detail oriented as say a hot press paper, but for me personally, my personal preference for painting, it gives me plenty of detail work. Now along with my paper, I'm going to be using my little metal palette here. If you haven't seen my video of where I fill this, um, go ahead and check that out. I will link that up in the corner in the cards. I have a variety of colors here and um, probably too many for this painting. I'm not going to be using all of them. And if you're curious of what colors are in this exact palette, go check out that video because I go through, you know, why I picked them and all the pigments and brands if you're really into that like I am. So for this painting, I also have some masking fluid, you know, especially when I'm working from a photograph, I like to really define the highlights. As you can see, especially in the eye, you know, some of the feathers here, I want to make sure that I preserve those. And one of the best ways that I've found to do that with watercolors is to use a masking fluid. Now you could also use white gouache towards the end of the painting or at the finish of the painting and I do do that for some paintings as well but sometimes you can't get as sharp and bright a white as you can with just preserving it with a masking fluid. And to apply my masking fluid I have here my little masking ruler and an old brush which has a little bit of, a little bit of soap on there. Uh, just to protect the bristles from the masking fluid. All right, so now that I got my supply set up, I'm gonna start playing with a little bit of what I'm gonna do with this painting. So I'm gonna set aside my actual painting paper for now, and I have this paper that has been stretched on this little board and stapled in, so I'm gonna use this as my little playground to test some things before I get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is wet my brush now, uh, in this painting, I'm going to be working with a couple different and uh, difficult textures. So first of all, I have the beak, which is a smooth and hard 
surface and I want to make sure that that translates into the final painting. It's very different for me to work with a bird versus like a dog or a cat or a rabbit because um, I'm very good at fur. So feathers are going to be an interesting challenge today and because it's a very mottled colored chicken I want to make sure that I get those colors in there. So I've decided that I'm going to take a look at some wet and wet techniques for this particular part of the, the painting. Because these feathers are really modeled in color and very soft looking, I think I'm actually going to do a nice little wet and wet wash to showcase that. So here I just have my paper which I'm wetting with some water, not soppy wet, but just enough to soak into the paper and to make it nice and slippy uh, when I put the paint on. So the first color that I'm going to pick up for this, this little chicken here is some Van Dyke Brown. So there's a very brown base to this and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of burnt sienna to brighten it up. So right on this wet color I'm going to just go ahead and drop in my paint to the watered area. I'm just going to go ahead and flick it around a little bit. I'm going to grab some pure burnt sienna. Kind of drop it in. So you can see how this really spreads out nicely with the pre-wetted paper and I really like that effect. So here on the chicken, uh, towards the neck and towards the, you know, the main part of the body, you can see these colors kind of modeling together and they look a lot darker than what this is right now and that's okay because we're probably going to add some more layers to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my neutral tint with some Van Dyke Brown and some Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to pop it into the bottom of this little wet patch. Okay, so it looks like wet and wet will work for this. So now I'm going to try some wet on dry, which is how I most of the time will paint, not always, and I'm just going to do a little test here. You say this is the chicken's, the chicken's uh, chest here. I'm doing a little bit of wet and wet here by popping that burnt sienna in on top of what I just painted. I'm going to do a little more wet and wet, popping this in. So you start to see how that might become a nice little way to paint the feathers of this chicken. Okay, so now I have my painting paper taped down and I'm gonna work on masking next. So I'm using my Winsor Newton one. I'm gonna take my masking pen, my little ruling pen, gently dip it in. And I'm gonna start with the, the eye area. There's a big highlight right there. There's some big highlights here in the feathers and I'm gonna like use this masking pen a little rolling pen to actually kind of draw with the masking fluid. So I'm just going to continue using this, uh, kind of like an ink pen. Just gently drawing this, making sure that there's enough masking fluid to actually cover things. And I'm just getting the bare highlights, and it looks like there's going to be a nice highlight here in the beak. And what this will do is actually preserve the whites of the paper by um, completely covering it so that no paint will get through until this is removed. 
I'm gonna do a couple more little random spots down here as well, just to just to add a little bit to it. And I'm not scraping my paper. I'm just putting enough pressure to get the pen to release some of that masking fluid. All right, now that the masking fluid is dry, I can get started with my first layer. So because I spent that extra time testing some techniques, I know now that some wet and wet washes would actually be a great base to paint on top of for this particular subject. So looking at the photo again, I'm gonna look at the, the main part of the back of the head and the neck area, and I think that's the wash that I'm gonna start first. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some water, just some clean water with my brush, and gently wet the areas where I'm gonna put down this wet and wet wash. Very lightly, not soaking the paper, just dampening it enough. I'm going to go down to about here. I'm going to test with my finger how wet it is. It looks like it's pretty good. Actually, I could probably go all the way down with this wash. It's going to gently dampen this. And I'll put a little extra water on this part since I will probably get to it last. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my burnt sienna, some very watered down burnt sienna. I'm just gonna lay it in. So you can see it doesn't spread like crazy because this area has already started to dry, but that's okay because I want a nice controlled but soft effect here. I'm just going to carry that color down on the back of the head. You see down here because there's a little more water over here that it's starting to flow really nicely. And I'm just going to kind of do these nice little quick stroke motions to get the paint down, which will help add a little bit of texture. Kind of purposely skipping some areas. I'm also going to take some water on this edge. Clean my brush in between. And soften that edge with some water and that way you'll see that paint starting to like blend in and feather in quite literally to the other areas and feather into quite literally the other areas very softly i'm going to do the same thing down here but a little more dense uh, with my pigment, so a little more paint. So now that I have this area here filled in with paint, you can see that because of the short, very swift strokes of my brush, um, even though it was wet, there's still some lighter and darker areas. That's okay because that's what I want. I want to add some texture there. So it's not just uh, a, not just a flat area. So now I'm gonna mix some Van Dyke Brown with my burnt sienna to darken it. And while this is still wet and still very activated, I'm gonna go in and just add a couple Nice little strokes, very quick strokes. It's going to feather in really nicely, but do you see already how there's some texture there that kind of resembles feathers? This area here is starting to dry a little bit and that's okay. 
that actually will work to my advantage here. So just, just very streaky motions. And as this dries, I'm going to go back into this area again once it dries a little bit more and uh, do the same thing again. So going up to the neck, I'm going to go ahead and feather some of that out, add some color in there. Now this is still quite wet, uh, so let's see what some of these other areas feel like. So when you're working from a photograph, you want to make sure that you're not just trying to get every single tiny detail, because even when you're painting photorealistically, you're not going to get every single itty bitty detail in there. The trick is to get enough detail uh, that you can fill in the rest when you're viewing the piece. And uh, it's a, a delicate balance between like overdoing it, making it too detailed uh, that it looks unrealistic at that point, and, or under detailed that it doesn't look realistic enough. So I'm taking this uh, mixture of burnt sienna, neutral tint, and Van Dyke Brown, and I'm just gonna feather that into some of these wet areas for some of the darker edges of the feathers because I feel like this nice, soft, wet and wet area will make that look really nice. Go ahead and do that up here as well. So you can do techniques like this wet on dry as well, but you're not gonna get the same soft edges that you would if you did it like this, wet and wet. So in the overall piece now, you see how that's starting to come together a little bit? And this is only like the first layer that we're working on. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a detour and go ahead and put a layer on the beak while I'm waiting for that to dry. And I'm just taking the same dark mixture from over here. I'm gonna try not to smudge this. And gently put over the top of that beak. Also going to fill in the little ear hole area a little bit because it's a little dark and I want to make sure that I define that early on. Alright, so you can see here that this area here is starting to dry now. It looks a lot uh, more matte, a lot less wet than say this area that we just painted. That's very reflective, very moist. But this paper is still damp. It, it's still uh, moving around, it's still very soft. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of my mixture right here. Dab a little bit of it. And I'm going to go ahead and add some details. So you can see that it's still spreading, it's still moving, but it's not blooming as much as it did before because it's not as wet. I'm just going to go add some short, very streaky strokes. Very streaky. And up here it's quite dry, so you can see that's a much sharper line. But that's okay, because I can go back and soften it a little bit. And I'm just starting to build that texture. So now you can see that that builds up a lot of texture and even though this is quite dry, I can still work it because it's not fully dry underneath. So I'm just going to take my brush with just some water and I'm going to go back over the strokes I just did and kind of blur some of them. So some of these down here were blooming a little bit because the paper underneath was still quite damp. But some of this up here, the paper was quite dried by the time that I got to it. So I just want to put a little more life back into it to blend some of those colors. But I'm not going to over blend them because I still want to keep some of that texture. So you see that some of these areas here 
are a little more matte and that's where I didn't re-wet uh, and the shiny moist areas are where I re-wet the paper. So while that's drying, I'm gonna attend to the face a little bit. And I have a color in my palette that is a buff titanium that I'm gonna take. Now buff titanium is an opaque color. It has a white pigment in it. And the reason that I'm using that is because I wanna add in some of these very uh, yellowy, peachy flesh tones in here. And I wanna make sure that they, they are pretty, pretty opaque. And I'm just going to lay in some of that color. Just like so. And because it's a flesh area, I'm going to add a little bit of red to make it almost, almost a peachy color uh, in some of these areas. Now I'm going to take a moist brush, I'm going to take off some of the moisture, just with my fingers, just a little bit, and I'm going to soften some of these, some of these areas, especially this beak here, because I want this to blend in. I want to blend in very softly, and the waddle underneath here, on the chicken's chin, I'm going to soften that, and soften up here. that's looking pretty good. So now that this area is dry, I'm going to pick up some more of my dark mix. Alright, so I'm gonna take some of my dark mix now that's dry, and I lightened it a little bit and made it a little more brown with my Van Dyke brown color. And now I'm gonna take a look at my photo, and I'm gonna see where those dark areas are. So down in here, there's this nice dark feather that's very prominent. The dark side of the feather. And I'm gonna soften these out as well. So I'm looking at the shapes here. Now these, the feather patterns are not gonna be exact to the photo. I'm gonna adjust them a little bit, but I wanna have the, the essence of them there. Let's go ahead and soften these. So you can see that some of these I'm blending out a little more than others, and that's because I want to have soft and hard edges in this. This is going to move up a little bit. Get some of these feather ticks up here as well. So now I'm going to take an even darker mix, and I'm going to go up to the comb here and start coloring that in because it's one of the darkest areas of this chicken's face. I have a little too much paint. Our 
action. Fear is the response to loud noises or loss of support. Now I'm going to take some neutral tint to darken some of this and I'm going to pop it in here and kind of let it flow into these other areas. I'm also going to add a little bit of detail here and here and then go ahead and soften them. And there's a little more dark area on the beak here. And just start to detail just a little bit of this, dragging some of that color down, and blending it with the rest of the head here. And I'm just taking some water and gently skirting it. You can see that it's starting to, it washed away some of the texture, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna take a burnt sienna mixture and mix in a little, just a touch of cad red to get more of a, a very red, rusty tone. And then just a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. I'm gonna go to the middle here. Now this is wet on dry, so I'm laying this in over a dry layer. And I'm gonna take just a water loaded brush and spread it. I'm realizing quite quickly this is a little too orange but that's okay because I can dilute it and spread it around make the other areas match All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. So as you can see, sometimes you don't need just wet and wet or wet on dry. Sometimes you can combine them and get some really gorgeous effects. Even though this is only the second layer of this, you can already see some really nice feather texture layering up here. And uh, compared to the photo, it's of course it's not the same. This is only the second layer, but you can already see that the development of those textures has already begun with those two techniques. So I hope that this video has helped you get some ideas on what to do with your next painting. And I hope that this was helpful in giving you some tips and tricks for working with a photograph uh, as a photo reference for your paintings and also uh, help you decide, you know, whether you want to use wet and wet or wet on dry. Uh, now there are tons of different combinations of these techniques as well as others that you can use. Sometimes you just gotta go with what you feel like doing or what you like doing. And the more that you paint, the more that you'll realize when you like to use wet and wet versus wet on dry. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell to get notified when I post a new video.